And welcome Thursday night again. Thursday, <laughs> bless God, it's Thursday. Welcome again, Greg Conrad, Family for Him Ministries in Cincinnati, Ohio. Hanging out today, talking to you about, we're going to get into Matthew 6 today and uh, talk about God's blessings of, of uh, I don't know, his blessings of provisions. So God is good in all things, all the time. And we thank you, Jesus, for, for sharing us and showing us the way. So let's just dive right into Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. So what's that saying right there, guys? God's saying, look, don't gloat, don't boast. God sees everything you do. Don't make it a public showing, right, for people to come on and say, hey, look how great and holy this guy is. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. So here we go again. He's saying, look, if you're going to do this for earthly show, <laughs> that's it. There's no heavenly rewards in this. But when you give to someone in need, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And give your gifts in private. And your Father who sees everything will reward you. And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in synagogues where everyone can see them. And I tell you the truth, that is all the reward that they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything, he will reward you. And when you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't hit the pause button right there. Jesus gives us his authority to speak the result. <laughs> Jesus clearly showed it's God's will for healing. It's God's will for goodness to conquer in this world. So we speak it in faith and trust. We don't need to keep saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it. God hears it. He speaks it. The demons of darkness know they shudder because it's the name of Yeshua Christ Jesus, the name above all names. Matthew 6, verse 8, don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. And pray like this, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food that we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. That's a big one, forgiving others. And do not let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And Because if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, this is why forgiveness is so powerful, if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled, and so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward, admiration on this earth, not of God, that they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your Father, who knows what you do in private. And your Father who sees everything will reward you. Have you been catching that through so far here, through Matthew chapter 6? And your Father who sees everything will reward you. We're talking about the eternal glories of eternal, eternal wars, not on this earth, although blessings do come from these things too now, guys. You do receive earthly blessings. Don't store up the treasures here on your earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves will break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven. Put them in heaven, not on earth. Store up your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. There's no evil happening up in heaven. <laughs> There's that gate there, right? When we all, look, when all of us die, we're all going to go to be judged, all right? We're going to go be judged, and the guy's going to say, come on in, life's look, you're looking good, or sorry, guys, it ain't happening here. You rejected my son, Jesus, it ain't happening. That could be a whole other message, right? <laughs> Wherever your treasure is, this is huge, 
Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Now, that's spoken, of course, in a spiritual context, but it's true in this world, too. Think about the things that we, that we like to do, that we get involved with. Uh, there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of excitement that goes with these things. Uh, and the things that we don't like, we, you know, we'll muddle through. We'll keep pushing them aside. You know, procrastination is, is a real thing, right? But the Bible says pretty clear in Matthew 6, 21, wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your heart will also be. So if we are desirous of all the things of this world, fame, money, go down the list, that's, 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 that's your treasure, and that's where your reward will be, just here on this earth. Your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is good, your whole body, it's filled with light. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness... How deep is that? How messed up is that, right? How, so isn't it awful? Isn't it a horrible thing for people that think they are doing all the right things for the wrong reasons, all right? And that's what this is saying here. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. So you cannot serve both God and, it says money in this translation, it could be the things of this earth, right? You cannot serve both. Choose who you will serve. I saw a, uh, I saw a, uh, a speaker not too long ago uh, that asked a really great question. He said, a lot of times what we'll do with youth especially, um, people come out of grade school and going, going into high school, high school to college, hey, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? And when we ask it in that way, uh, you know, people are going, well, you know, I want to be a doctor. Uh, why do you want to be a doctor? Well, I want to make a lot of money. Great. Why do you want to make a Well, I want to help people too. Okay, you can kind of go down that list. But ask, ask people this way. Ask it in this way. Who do you want to serve? Who do you want to serve? He had a person uh, in, the, in, the, in the audience that he was speaking to, uh, and he says, sir, what do you do? He says, well, I fix cars. He says, well, okay, you fix cars. And by the time they were done, the guy said, I help people get to their destinations. It's, like, it's all in the way that we look at it, right? It's all in our attitude, the way that we piece all these together. So you cannot serve both God and money, but who will you serve? Who do you choose to serve? That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you've had enough food and drink and enough clothes to wear, but isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? And look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? We already know that, right? No. Everything we're worried about, it can't add a single moment to our life. God alone does these things. There's enough worries. It goes on, right? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon, King Solomon, in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat and what will we drink and what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father, he already knows all of your needs, every one. My favorite verse of all the Bible, throughout the entire Bible, there's so many great ones, but this one in particular, I think is just, it's one of the big ones. Seek first, seek ye first the kingdom of God above all and his righteousness. Live righteously, and he will give you everything he needs. The version, I think, is more from the King James. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, what are all these things or everything? you? It's exactly what it says here, everything you need. So all the verses prior, God will provide for your food, your shelter. He'll provide all these things for you, all right? If we're seeking God, if we're reaching to God, if we're looking to God, placing our trust in him. So don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough. I suffered for years from anxiety. And one of the things with anxiety is you're always trying to be ready, right? Be in control. Be ready for what's coming tomorrow. And this verse right here says it right. Today's trouble is enough. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will bring its own worries. Deal with what you've got right here. God will provide. God will give you 
God will bring you your peace in that. So that is Matthew 6, all the way through uh, verses 1 through 34. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So I hope that's great for the drive time with it. Get into your Bibles, guys. If you're not into your Bible right now, get into it. Read your Bible every day. I like to use a Bible app on my phone. You can, uh, I like to use the audio version as I'm driving. It'll actually speak it to me. It's a, if you look on your uh, Play Store or whatever your, different, whatever your app store might be, check out, uh, look for the Bible app. It's made by version, Y-O-U version. Check out that app. They've got reading plans on there that can walk you through the Bible, can take you through like the whole year. My favorite reading plan, I've shared with it many times before, is the Robert Roberts reading plan. And the reason I like it, it will have you read some Old Testament scripture. And whenever possible, it will have you read the New Testament scripture that shows the fulfillment of that scripture. Perfect example, Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes we are healed. And then that shows the conclusion or the after Jesus it happened, the fulfillment of it, First Peter 2.24, and by stripes you were healed. So Isaiah was saying it's coming. Peter says it's already been here. It's done. It is finished. So your healing and your peace, it belongs to you because of what Jesus has done. There are many, 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 many different prayer requests that, uh, that come through uh, that we see that the enemy is just working overtime. Um, and, um, you know, of course, cancer, the little C. I've heard people say, you know, the big C. No, the big C is Christ, guys. Cancer is a little C because Christ crushes cancer. So, Lord, I just thank you by your glorious name and grace that you crush cancer. You crush all things contrary to the word and the will of God. And we command. This is how, remember, we talked about praying. Don't babble on and on and on with it. Speak the results. Speak with authority. So we stand upon that authority of Yeshua Christ Jesus, the authority that I receive as a believer, that you receive as a believer in Jesus Christ, because in Christ we are made righteous, right? We are made righteous in Christ, so we are told to speak the result. So, Lord, we speak the result of faith and healing. We speak healing. We speak life, not death. We speak your glory power. We, th- we thank you, Lord, as the doctors just stand amazed. As the power of God, the word of God, takes authority over darkness and commands it goes. It casts them out, and we speak the life and the strength and the glory power of Yeshua Christ Jesus into these bodies, their body, minds, and spirits, where there's great peace and comfort and joy and love. Thank you, Jesus, for your great grace and grace and glory. Do me a favor, comment, leave me some comments, send me some messages. Let me know how I can be praying for you uh, because we got to speak the result, guys. We got to speak the result and claim the victory. So remember, seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is everything you need. Don't worry. God's got it. Making an awesome rest of the week. I'll be back here on Sunday at Christ the Prince of Peace Church. We'll be live at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. So I will see you then.